Bye-bye. We are the red jumpsuit apparatus. Live out! Welcome back to the Philippines. Uh, I hope you guys have been resting and been relaxed. Um, it's been a while since you've been here, but before embarking on this year's tour, uh, what was your frame of mind? What were you guys doing? What were you busy with? Um, we've just been killing it in the States. Uh, we've done a ton of like emo revivals like Alive and Well in the US. So we've just been doing a ton of festivals with bands like All Make and Redance, One Day Girls, Simple Plan, uh, Who Am I Missing, The Used, Story of the Year. Story of the Year. Yeah. Uh, we've been doing that all year long in the States. So uh, it's been really fun. Also, just getting everybody excited because uh, we have some new music coming out. It's the first time in a long time we actually put new music out in the last. Um, and we put out this emergency EP, so it's been a minute, it took a while to just let that sit. And we, we did half of that during quarantine, so like, this was the first time we really made a record in a long time. So just kind of playing out the year, getting ready for the next rollout, really planning more so for next year, um, than this year. There are a lot of tons of live shows, we played, I don't even remember how many shows, but we've been playing all year long from March all the way from now. Well, I, I'm glad you mentioned uh, because there is this big revival of, of the music, the kind of music that you guys play with all these bands. Uh, where do you attribute that? Where, why do you think people are, again, interested? Because I remember when I was seeing you guys who were playing live and the bands that you were playing with, I suddenly had to rush to my CD collection. I was like, holy shit, that sound was a good one. And then ended up just going through my CD collection. Where do you attribute that? That's a really good question. Yeah, I, 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 yeah I feel like a lot of music just in the last decade, you know, it, is, it was like EDM had its own really big thing and, you know, and it kind of it pushed a lot of like, it pushed a lot of the emo and rock stuff kind of out of the, you know, out of the picture for a good, I wanted like five, six, seven years, right? And I think it just, you know, it all comes full circle, right? And now it's just coming back around and it's just stronger than ever. I think, you know, like the the youth just uh, caught, caught a, a glimpse of, of the past and they're like, damn, that's, that's sweet. And it's just kind of, you know, full circle stuff. I also think um, being a dad myself, like it's been so long, like we've been a band for 21 years. So, and a lot of our most popular songs are from like 2006, which was like 19, you know, 18 years ago. A lot of our fans then, even though we did well and had huge crowds, were too young to come to the shows. Either their parents said no, or they didn't have enough money. But now they have money and nobody can tell them no. So I think that has a lot to do with it. Mentioning that you know you, you guys are doing it, you're killing it in the states. Um, is it easier? Is it safe to assume that things are easier now? You know what to do, or are there newer challenges that you didn't expect with, uh, as far as writing music or touring or whatever? I definitely think that we've hit our stride as a band. Um, we've been a band so long. We've gone through so many different changes and ups and downs. Where like um, for a while we were just kind of like hanging in there, you know and in that 21 years, we never took a hiatus and we never broke up. And there's almost, there's like four other bands from our scene that can say that. It's just very uncommon. But right now, all these bands are like coming back. They're reuniting. Well, that's not us. We didn't go anywhere. We just pushed through the whole time. So I think we've hit our stride. We've been in our stride for a while now. Uh, we have a really good production team. We do almost everything in house. John does a lot of our, um, almost all of our, like a lot of our producing and mixing and I produce as well. And Randy, my brother, engineers. Josh, he's learning how to engineer now and getting into that world. And uh, we just, we track ourselves a lot. And we're just experienced. Now we have experience. You know, a long time ago, we were fresh. We were so young. I mean, you know, Joey was, how old were you when we signed? Uh, 19, I think. He was 19 years old. You know, when we, so the first time around, we were just young kids. We didn't know what we were doing. We never said that we did know what we were doing. Now we, we do. We know what we're doing. Um, again, it's been a while since you've been here in the Philippines. Are there any core takeaways, core memories of, of your last trip here that you were sort of like looking forward to? Any particular food or, or shit to do? Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's a little bit of everything. We, we've, uh, we all love it here. I mean, I think I can speak for all of us when we say it's definitely one of our favorite places to be. So with that said, like we make the most of it when we're here. So everything that you mentioned, the, you know, food, the people, the venues being back at the Sky Dome, it's all awesome, you know? Yeah. Uh, so there's no, I don't know, for me, there's not like anything too specific. It's just being here in general. Even just being at the airport, it's like awesome. You want, you want you want Lechon. I do. I do. And I, I, I don't have this I time yet. And I want Lumpia. And I need, we need to find the right place to get it at. Nice. So. Perfect, perfect, <laughs> pretty. <laughs> um, uh, trivia. Three things you can't live without. Um, you know, aside from the usual 
stuff you need, like the, the requisite stuff, but like stuff on your rider. What what are three things you always want there? We gotta have That's, sugar-free Red Bull. Yeah. We, we smashed the sugar-free Red Bulls for sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know, three things you gotta have. We're so low maintenance, people are always blown away by how small our crew is and the, and the small amount of gear that we have for the shows that we play. So we don't really bring a lot, we travel yeah. light, but for me, I gotta have some kind of game console. Yeah. So uh, currently, I'm using. Uh, I brought my Nintendo Switch. I gotta have that. Um, gotta have that for me. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, I mean, water, Red Bull, Call of Duty, video game. Yeah, it's some kind of you know. Kind of, yeah. Some kind of gaming yeah. device. They play on their phones a lot. Yeah. Actually, Call of Duty Mobile. Mm -hmm. And then we don't play any games though. Those I'm still like 15 years deep into Candy Crush. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> no, not not giving up. Not giving up. <laughs> Keep it real. Eh? <laughs> so what's in the immediate future after this tour? Uh, I know you said you were working on new music. So when you get back, when you're done with the tour, what's the first thing on the agenda? Aside from sleep, I assume. You, know, you want to take a break a little bit. But well, yeah, what's the next like work thing you guys are going to be working on? Well, right now we're just super focused on just like, you know, one thing that we've learned, we've been at band for so long, is just to stop and smell the roses. So we're just really focused on enjoying where we're at today, right now, this week. And I'm actually married to a Filipino, and I'm actually, my family, some of my family's here today at the show, like 20 of the to the show today, so. So it's very special for us. We're not just saying that, like I literally have relatives who live here, so. It's very special for us every time we play here, specifically in Manila. Um, but I also have some other sprinkled off the islands too. I don't get, I never get to see them, so but one, maybe one day. But um, we're also just really happy to focus on the fact that, you know, we left the major label system in 2009, and we didn't unsign again all the way until six months ago. So it's kind of a huge deal. We signed a uh, record deal with a pretty big company. They haven't actually announced it yet, so I guess it's supposed to wait for them, but we have a brand new album coming out. And uh, we're super pumped on it. We think it's some of our best work. And uh, we know they're going to love it here in the Philippines for sure. I, I absolutely 100%. You know, I, even if they don't love it in the States. But we've gotten to the point where we don't even care if they like it in the States or not. We're actually, we enjoy playing over here more. So we kind of pay attention. We do listen to our Filipino fan base a lot. And we, we interact with them a lot online. You'll see it all the time. And so we kind of made this album for them. Um, our message to our Filipino fans, um, honestly, it's just gratitude. Gratitude for like so much support over the years. We've always had so much love from the Philippines. Even during COVID, when I was going live on Facebook and doing free concerts, it was like 85% Filipino people watching. And it was really tough. And a lot of the, a lot of the Filipino people watching were nurses and doctors and, and people who were on the front lines fighting this thing. And people who were sick were thanking us for like, you know, I was trying to literally go live at the right time to make sure that people would be awake over here when they could actually see it. So we just had so much support over here. Probably why I married the girl before we moved on. But um, it's just a special place to us. It's not another stop on the floor. So just that gratitude. Um,